Good morning, family. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hallelujah. How are you doing this evening? Welcome, family. Welcome. Let's start sharing and um, tap on the screen very quickly. We've just been hit with load shedding, so we need to make sure we are maximizing the time that we're going to be here, okay? So I'm asking every single person to share at least with 10 people or more. If you want, share with everybody that appears on your timeline uh, as being online. Um, share on your WhatsApp groups as well. Those of you on YouTube as well and Facebook, welcome. Guys, as you know that due, those, due to those technical difficulties that are beyond our control, sometimes you might have to jump over to TikTok if um, the stream is not able to carry through. Unfortunately, those are the challenges that we face in South Africa when there's load shedding. But good evening. Good evening from Zambia. Welcome, everybody. Please, as you're coming in, do announce which country you're coming from. Let me see who is represented here. Let me see which countries are starting to pray, which countries are ready to pray with us this evening. Hallelujah. God is good. God is faithful. God is in this. Hallelujah. Welcome to those who are seeing me for the first time. This is the protocol breaking prayer platform. This is our evening session where we normally go into the word and teach more. Today we are talking about the strength of prayer. Hallelujah. If you can help me type in the comment section, prayer strength, type in the comment section, prayer strength. Hallelujah. Prayer strength. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody type prayer strength and you just attach the name of your country. Uh, I want to see which countries are ready to pray with strength. Hallelujah. Who is ready to receive the strength of prayer? Where are you coming from? Just type for me in the comment section prayer strength hallelujah holy spirit i thank you i welcome you in this place father god have your way my god in jesus mighty name father we are ready to receive every single um benefit that you have in store for us today in the name of jesus christ holy spirit i thank you as you are coming in good morning i mean good evening hallelujah i'm so used to coming in in the morning um Dumaizag, welcome everybody prayer strength south africa is represented prayer strength uh, bloemfontein is represented prayer strength i see a lot of south africa cape town i see you guys already prayer strength zambia is represented prayer strength kenya i see you prayer strength swaziland i haven't seen swaziland for a while welcome swaziland everybody who's coming in for the first time i have no doubt you are gonna have an awesome time in the presence of the lord with me today so if you've got your body Bibles and your journals and your notebooks, whatever it is that you take notes of, hallelujah. I want you to pray, pay attention and preach with me in the comment section. You're going to teach along with me, but you're going to make notes as much as possible where I refer to scriptural references and you can use those scriptural references later on to meditate and go through what we have gone through. And if you are following me on TikTok, I want to just advise you that please follow me as soon as possible so that we don't lose the connection. I want you to be part of the family and you can go to my profile fortune and online on tiktok you will find the instagram link with the youtube link there and you can be part of the youtube link and um you can also be able to review and replay and watch the replay of the message as well okay i pray for every single person everybody who's here and once we get to the end of our teaching we will go through everything else again recap pray together any specific needs whatever we can cover by the grace of god okay so as i said today i'm gonna be slightly faster by the grace of god because we do have load shedding and we are currently operating on backup power at the moment so help me to pray and help me to preach faster so that we reach as many people we are going to populate the kingdom of god together we're going to populate the kingdom of god together how do we do that pastor fortune you help me share help me share the live broadcast i'm watching for the people who are actually sharing uh i'm good thank you so much god bless you i'm just going by the grace of god amen i came back by demand and hallelujah hallelujah <laughs> Can you imagine? I'm telling you. So I'm trying to preserve my strength. I see somebody, DK Lee, you are seeing. I asked for permission to come here because uh, some of you guys asked me to be here tonight at 10 p.m. So let's see what the Lord wants to teach tonight. Welcome to those of you on Facebook and YouTube again. Let me make sure that you can see my face again. 
Hallelujah. Sometimes we need that injection of strength, the prayer strength that needs to be injected in us. Hallelujah. And we're going to ask God to strengthen us. Hallelujah. We're going to uh, go into an understanding what are the forces that give strength to prayer. Because sometimes we don't pray effective prayers. Talk to me, somebody. How does prayer strengthen us? Hallelujah. Maybe it will help somebody to understand better. How does prayer strengthen you? Why should you pray? Why do you hear? so much about prayer is it in the time frame that you actually pray is it in the way you scream but um you know we're gonna find all those things out amen so if you're coming in please help me type um prayer strength to, to help those who are also coming in who don't understand the topic for today we are teaching on the strength of prayer as you are coming in you are typing in the comment section um, I missed you, JK. I'm always here. That means you are banking some of the classes that we are having. Uh, so I'm always here. Prayer strength. Hallelujah. How does prayer strengthen us? That is the question. That is the principal question that we have. How does uh, prayer strengthen us? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can somebody just ask and say, how does prayer strengthen me? Hallelujah. Father, we know that you are our loving Father. Holy Spirit, I invite you. I need your strength myself. So, Father, in this prayer, even before I start teaching your word, I ask for your strength this evening. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Father, as we commune and fellowship with your word, as we commune and fellowship with the Holy Spirit, we ask that you speak, Lord. We ask that you touch somebody who's expecting a word tonight. Somebody who has been praying, who doesn't understand why their prayers have not been effective. Lord, will they will receive an answer tonight. And Father, there will be a direction and a redirection for some in Jesus' mighty name. Holy Spirit, we know that you listen when we pray. Father, because your word has assured us that before we even ask, you've already heard us, oh God. And before we even, uh, uh, um, you know, uh, start expecting results, we are already knowing that you are already in effect and you are unfolding it in Jesus' name. So, Father, we come to you on this protocol-breaking prayer platform. We are here daily, Father God, seeking you in the morning, in the night seasons, and those of others who are also here who seek you in the noon times, Father God. Father, I ask that you give them strength in Jesus' mighty name. We invite you, Holy Spirit, to bring the peace that surpasses all understanding in our lives. I feel a sense that there's a lot of people that need a lot of peace because they, they've been under a lot of anxiety, oh God. And God, yet while they are praying to you, Father God, there's a lot of voices that are going through their minds. And Father God, I ask for your peace that surpasses all understanding. They are asking themselves what is the plan for their lives, not only for their purposeful, but it also what is the purpose and the direction in their relationships. And I pray for their, those people, Father God, who are at crossroads, who are at the junction where they are asking for answers. I hope I'm communicating to some people. I'm just feeling in the spirit that a lot of people are at a crossroad when they are asking God, what am I here for? And God, what am is the next decision is the next step that i'm about to take the direction that you want me to take in jesus mighty name that he says that's me i'm gonna start teaching just now thank you jesus but i just feel um the holy spirit is saying so there's so many of you, you need the strength, right? So this teaching is really coming at a right season and at a right time. May the Lord give you strength. And I just felt the urge to invite the peace of the Holy Spirit. You need peace. You need to get to the point of peace. And the Lord is saying, until you, you, you can sense my peace, there is a peace that is going to come over you. Father God, by the grace of God, while we go through this teaching, Father God, I ask that you speak through me to in one way or the other answer the questions that they may have or to give them the direction to get to the point where they just their confidence is welled up inside of them in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I pray for that person who has been waiting 
to develop a relationship with you, O oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Somebody type prayer strength. Hallelujah. I pray for every single person that is broken. Father, you came to mend the broken hearts. I pray for the mending of the broken hearts right now. I pray for the storm to stop. Now, some of you, there's a, there's a huge storm because you've given so much. You have given so much in that relationship. There is, there's a heavy burden. You have given so much in that relationship and you are heartbroken. Michelle, stay on for the whole broadcast. We're going to teach. God bless you, pretty girl. Heal Holy Spirit. Guys, I'm going to try and teach, but I already, I, I'm already feeling very heavy. I'm feeling the heaviness. Lord, give us direction. You see, God is like a father. And he's like our, what our earthly fathers are supposed to be. And he says, through your fellowship with me, I'm here to help you develop a relationship with me. The same way we have an expectation on this earth that we would have a relationship with our fathers on earth. He says, I want to hear from you. He says, don't give up on me. Don't give up on, on seeking my face. Don't give up because I'm listening. Some of you have been feeling like, God, are you even listening? Some of you, because of how you reverence him, you have been feeling like, should I even start? You are too scared to tell him. But you can feel that you have, you've actually been losing so much hope and you're, you're feeling like he has not been listening. But he says, I will answer your prayers. It might be that thought that maybe in, he, he says you need to get to a quiet position and a quiet space where I can talk to you. That in those thoughts, you can be able to discern which ones are my thoughts and which ones are your thoughts. In those spiritual feelings that you will get, in the scriptures that will pop out and come, you need to go seek the word that will speak to you. Father God, let there be a release tonight. It's so heavy. I, I think this is going to be a different direction meeting. Father, help us to get an understanding of your nature. Help us get an understanding of who you are. He says, I'm a loving God, fortune. The Bible says God is love. And that is how we are supposed to experience him. God is love. And he says, I will speak to them daily. I will speak to them and I will continue to speak them daily. Seek his guidance. He says, I will provide the answers that you require. I just feel the Holy Spirit telling me to encourage a lot of people. He says, I will. Thank you, Jesus. Father, help us to understand where exactly we are, in what compass, in what, in what position. Are we moving in the right direction? Help us and show us how we can return to the place where you want us to be, how we can turn the situation around. I pray for the storm to be at peace. 
Kaulele, the spirit of the living God says you will hold your peace. You will no longer speak anymore. You will no longer answer back. In those, in those contentions that you are having with your in-laws, you will no longer speak. You will hold your peace. You will hold your peace. You will not answer back anymore. You will hold your peace. It is in your silence that your strength is about to return in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, quiet every storm. Quiet every storm. Tabs, the Lord will give you direction in your newly wedded status. So saints, we begin to understand in our intended teaching for today, to understand the strength of prayer. That God is a God that provides answers. God is a God of love. And God wants to strengthen. I believe more than ever, there is something happening in the spiritual dimension. And those who are men and women of God who are on this broadcast with me currently, you have felt a move. There is a sudden move. There is a... There's a sudden urge of people to pray even more. I don't know who has felt it. There is an urge that you have to pray far much more. You've got suddenly a burden of prayer. And God is saying it's because there is a change in seasons. He's saying I'm calling for a deeper relationship because there is, we, are, we are going into a season when things are going to be very fast, guys. Things are going to be very fast. And I know those of you who've got callings and those that um, are gifted, you, you will testify to this. There's a switch when things are moving very fast. There's going to be a lot of turmoil as well. People are going through a lot. And if you thought this was the lot, there's still going to be more. It's going to be intense. And it's only prayer that is going to get you through. So it's only prayer that is going to like push you. So... I encourage you to switch into a deeper dimension. Somebody type in the comment section the strength of prayer, prayer strength. Just begin to call on the prayer strength. God, I need strength. Because it is the strength of prayer. Prayer helps us develop a relationship with God. But also prayer will help us understand his loving nature. Prayer will guide us in, in, in getting the answers that we are looking for. We begin to understand our purposes God now more than ever there is an agency for us to understand the purpose of our lives prayer will help us find the direction that we need to go in because a lot of people don't know thank you MK thank you Anagabele it helps us to find direction and some of you will need also your quiet private time to pray to God it will help you to go through serious, you know, those serious decisions that you are needing to make. He says, go deeper with me and, I, and have the confidence that I'm always listening and I'm always ready to provide the right answers and I'm already always ready to give you the guidance that you are seeking. And he says, even when I've chosen not to answer immediately in the way that you might have expected, by my prayer, by your prayers to me, you will find peace. Did somebody hear that? Even when the answer will not come immediately, he says you will have peace. That will be the assurance that you need that you're on the right track. Father, we thank you, Lord. As we ask for your strength in prayer, we know that, Lord, prayer, prayer will give us strength to avoid every temptation to give up, every temptation to, to, to backslide, my God. The Bible says Jesus encouraged his disciples. He continually
Heavenly, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody keep on saying, I will pray effectively in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I will pray effectively in Jesus' mighty name. I will pray effectively in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You don't only have to pray, but you have to pray to have results. I need you to declare with me and teach with me and say, my prayers will have results. My prayers will deliver results in Jesus' mighty name. I will not only pray effectively, Grace, you will pray and have results. Can somebody declare and, and, and pray with me and say, I will have results. My prayers will bring results in Jesus' mighty name. You see, child of God, the strength or the weight of prayer determines the outcome and the impact of prayer. So tonight, I want you to pray with an objective and to, to, to learn with the objective to say, from today going forward, I will have the strength and I will pray with the strength. Uh, my prayers will carry the weight, the weight that will unpack outcomes. I will have good outcomes from my prayer times in Jesus' mighty name. There is a weight of prayer that we need to get to tonight. And that weight will make sure that we make impact. Come on, somebody. There has to be an impact. Somebody say impactful prayer. Uh, my prayers have impact. My prayers have impact. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. My prayers have impact in Jesus' mighty name. Are we still together, YouTube? Are you still giving, seeing me? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Just confirm to me, please, those of you on YouTube and Facebook, hallelujah. My prayers will have impact in Jesus' mighty name. I'm about to race through, guys, because I want to pray for some people. There's a burden. I feel the Holy Spirit wanting me to pray for some people tonight. I will have results. So you need to understand that. What is that thing that determines the weight and the strength of my prayers? What is that thing that will determine the weight and strength of my prayers? It's not necessarily in the length of the prayer. Because there are people who can pray for nine hours and not have an impact and not get results. There are people who are thinking that maybe it's in the vocabulary. It's not in the vocabulary. Although sometimes the vocabulary may sound nice. Some people may have prayer and have prayer points that sound very nice but have no effect. So our goal is to have prayers that have an effect. They must carry the weight and the strength that will bring effect and results. Some people think it's in the shouting, but it's not necessarily in the shouting. You might find somebody who is busy shouting for 15 hours or three hours, but no impact, no results. You may find somebody who is screaming. It might not be in the scream. Somebody say, I will pray impactful prayers in Jesus' mighty name. Some people think it's in the physical gestures, especially, you know, sometimes as a joke in churches, people who are always in the front on the altar, they will be making funny faces, and we always make a joke of, of especially praise and worshipers. It might not be in the gest. So it doesn't help that you try and copy somebody else how they're praying. You pray the way. Don't even say, I can't pray like the other person. The Lord says, I must tell you not to discount yourself. Don't look at yourself down and say, I don't pray like so and so. It doesn't come. You don't have to know the scripture reference. I remember there was a season when I could quote scriptures and I couldn't tell you where they were. But I just knew by the leading of the Holy Spirit. So sometimes we, we put ourselves under too much pressure thinking, oh my God, is it that I'm going to, you know, you want to quote the scriptures like the other person. Don't put yourself under pressure. Your prayer can just be as impactful. Just have a relationship with God and the Holy Spirit would put words in your mouth. You don't have to rat rattle it out like somebody else. Thank you, Jesus. I will do so Tembingosi just now. Let me teach this quickly. Just stay with us and focus on, on the teaching. What is it that thing that determines the strength of my prayer? What is the weight that I need to put to ensure that I've got results to the prayers that I need? 
everybody prays, but not everybody pray, pray, uh, not everybody's prayer carries the same result. There's a lot of people that may be here on this broadcast and they're saying they're here to pray, but some of them are not here to pray. They're still spectating. This is your life. There's no version 2.0. Once your ticket is called, it's called. And I just want to, I just want you to have the best of life ever. I just want you to experience the abundance of God ever. In this lifetime, in this season, we're not going to waste away. So in our teaching today, I want you to understand the objective. To understand that not every prayer carries the same weight. And your objective is going to be, God, how, what is it that I need to do? Or how do I need to pray so that I, 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 I release the, uh, the right type of weight? Amen, somebody. Prayer is in weights and it carries various degrees of strength in the realm of the spirit. That's why you have some people who are able to rebuke certain things and those things go away. And there are some people who are saying, but I also called on the name of Jesus, but nothing happened. And God is just pushing us and saying, you need to push even further. Yesterday, make sure you listen to the message yesterday on the things that hinder your prayers. So the weight or the strength of prayer determines the impact and the outcome of the, of the prayer. The weight and the strength of your prayer will determine the impact and the outcome of prayer. So what determines the strength or the weight of prayer? That, let's ask God that. Father, what is, the, what, is, what is that thing that will determine the strength or the weight of my prayers? Number one, the quality of the relationship that you have with God. Help me teach this together, okay? Type it out so that you don't forget it. You can take notes on the screen. The quality of your relationship and your strength with God. The quality of your relationship with God will determine the strength and the weight of your prayer. The reason why some people are not having results is because they don't have a quality relationship. They've got a, a relationship of a person going to a, a, a shopping mall with a shopping list. Somebody say quality relationship quality relationship with God. Genesis 1927 introduces us to a man called Abraham and it tells us Abraham went around early in the morning to the place where he stood before the Lord. So it was a practice of Abraham that there's a place where he goes and stands before the Lord. Do you have that place? A, a place where you have exclusivity, a place where you have silence, where you can talk to God, where you can develop your relationship and the quality of your relationship with God. Genesis 18, 19 then takes us and, and, and begins to tell us that, for I have known him in order that he may command his children and his household after him, that they keep the way of the Lord to do righteousness and justice that the Lord may bring to Abraham what he had spoken to him. Because of the relationship that Abraham had with God, the quality relationship that he had with God, God says, I had brought so much blessing blessing so so that i i promised him i made a command that his children and, and his household shall always be kept and they will always keep the way of the lord there are some people who are reserved to follow a certain path and immediately when they detour it threatens the quality of their relationship with God. And, and, and there's some elements. The Holy Spirit says there's some elements. There's a way you started, but now you started deviating. And that has impacted the quality of your relationship. In fact, some of you, in your families, you have been following a particular pattern. And God had been pleased. But you have noticed that one of your children has started deviating. And that has not been bringing you much joy. Hallelujah, somebody. So we begin to see that God had a solid relationship with Abraham, a, a man who interceded for the nation due to the quality of the relationship he had with his God. You develop the guts, you develop the confidence to stand up and intercede for others because of the quality of the relationship with, you have with God. And you, God places that burden on you. It's not a normal burden. By so saying, I'm calling on all the intercessors, those of you who know that you've got a calling of intercession, to stand and pray for God's people. Stop resisting it. 
The Bible says that Elijah had a strong stand and high quality relationship with God as well. This guy was so strong that he could open the heavens and close the heavens at will. You need to understand that there's a dimension you get to. Your words carry so much power. You can open and close the heavens at will. There are people who have reached that kind of dimension. There are people, if, if Jesus could command a tree, that it should dry up and just like that. And it's not only in the people on the, in the Bible. These things have been happening here on, on earth. There are people that have that daringness to go to shrines physically and command those shrines to burn and God will honor their word and that shrine will burn up. 1 Kings 17, it says, Elijah the Tishbite, the inhabitants of Gilead, said to Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel lives before whom I stand, I sh there shall not be dew nor rain these years except by my word. At my word. So Elijah, when he issued this instruction, he knew that when he prophesied something, it was going to come to pass. He was not doubtful of what God was going to say. And I'm saying that if you develop the relationship you have with God and you have a quality relationship with God, you will have the confidence to know that the things that will come out of your mouth will come to pass with no shaking. Father, give us the template of Elijah. Let us live according to the template of Elijah. Come on, somebody. He says he was a man with like natures as ours. So he was not a different man. In James 5, 17, he says he was a man. He was a man with like passions. Hallelujah. He said it would not rain and the Lord honored him. It did not rain for three years. Talk to me, somebody. Ephesians 3, 20 says, Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask and think, my God, according to the power that works in us, then God begins to make us believe and, and make us understand through his prophetic word that there is a power that works inside of you. So if your prayers are not yielding the impact and, the, and not releasing the results that you're expecting, then you need to check your power gauge. Do you still have the enough petrol that you need? Is your power working fine? Or are you load shedding inside of you? Because he says, I'm able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you could have ever comprehended, all that you could have ever even put on your shopping list, all you could have ever thought to come and talk to me and address me about. I'm able to do exceedingly, but it's not in the power that is working outside of you. The power has to work inside of me. Somebody please tell, him, tell me in the comment section that there's a power inside of me and my power is working in Jesus' name. Somebody say my power is working in Jesus' mighty name say my power is working the power inside of me is working the power inside of me is working it shall come to pass therefore that when they call i will answer and while they are still speaking i will hear so while you are still speaking the lord is saying i'm hearing you i'm giving you the assurance while they speak. oh my before you called him he already came into this meeting before we called on him, before, why, when, when I started praying, he was already here. He says, I'm already hearing before you even speak, before you even put your prayer request on the screen. I'm already hearing you. Request can only make sense if a relationship is valid, guys. Nobody just makes demands when there's no relationship. That is why when somebody and you're walking in the street and somebody says, hey, give me 200 rands or give me $200, you're not just going to give that person money because you don't have a relationship with him. And, 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 and that is what I'm hearing the Holy Spirit saying, do you have a relationship with me? What gives you the platform of wanting to ask for things if you don't have a relationship with me? That is why if I'm married or, or you are married or you have parents, you, are, you have the boldness to walk up to them and tell them, this is what I want. Can you please buy me this? It is, bare, it is, it is based on a relationship. There must be a, 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 the foundation of a relationship. That is the relationship we have with our parents. That is why God says, have a quality relationship with me so that when you ask me, by all capacity, if I have, I always tell my child, don't ever be afraid to ask me. Ask me for things that you don't even think that I can afford. But if I have the capacity, I will do it. So there must be a valid relationship. Somebody preach with me. Come on, somebody. 
Request can only make sense where there is a relationship that is valid the, and the validity flows from an underlying relationship. There must be an underlying relationship. You can't meet somebody today and be demanding money from them tomorrow and say, oh, well, they, they said they wanted to date me. No. That doesn't happen. Whatever you need. The Lord says, let me know. If it's in my capacity, I'll be able to do it. If it's good for you, I'll be able to do it. If it makes sense, I'm not going to be annoyed. I'm not going to say you are taking my time and you are annoying me. But if it makes sense, hallelujah. No stranger on the road can make a demand from you. If your child asks you for something, you'll probably give your child that thing faster than a stranger on the road. So God has not called us to begging. Immediately when you, now, when you don't have an underlying quality relationship with God, what begins to then happen is that your, your prayer then sounds like begging. If you don't have a quality relationship, you are begging. And children don't beg. They just ask their parents of what they're entitled to. God has not called us to beg for him, from him. But he called us to pray. He didn't call you to beg. Somebody please declare it with me on the comment section. I'm not called to beg. I'm called to pray. I'm not called to beg. I'm called to pray. God bless you, Matsidi. So God is lifting you today. Before you rush into requests, um, you know, rush into into relationship before you rush into requesting rush into relationship rather seek a relationship first that is why people who are in dating relationships they will you will hear some men saying ah that person is a gold digger because you rushed into requests but you're not called to beg definitely in jesus name Relationship has to be superior to request. It has to be superior to the request. You need to understand what is the source of the oil where you are making a request. Thank you, Holy Spirit. This is what the Holy Spirit is saying right now. There are some of you who are in relationships. And you entered into these relationships for material convenience. And this material convenience has made you enter into specific relationships with people that are carrying. How do I put this in English, my God? They have strengthened themselves through evil charms. And every time you are having sexual relations, I'm going to say something and, and, and I won't call names because just I want to protect you. Every time you are sleeping with this person, it's not only an issue of an exchange of destiny, but you keep on getting money from this person. And there's an, there's the, the oil, the resources of the oil, where that money is coming from, is actually going to affect you. And it's affecting you already in Jesus' mighty name. You are being affected right now. Strange things are happening. The Holy Spirit is taking me. There's somebody, you're having a relationship with somebody. And the person is not even having sex with you, but has been in a relationship with you. He's actually doing everything for you. He's giving you the money that you want, but you're not having sexual relations with him. And you're saying, but pastor, what is the problem with that? And the Lord specifically said, your star has been stolen. Your star has been exchanged. And you've been in a pattern of these relationships because none of these relationships last more than three months. And this particular one that you are currently with right now. Thank you, Jesus. There is more that is being taken away from you. Yes, it is a demonic source. It's a, it is coming from a demonic source. So, relationship, 
with God as to be more superior than our requests. But these days, people prefer and value, um, you know, they value some other things. They prefer value, they prefer appreciation. I want to pray for you tonight and say, God, let there be a grace to develop a relationship with you from all of us, everybody who's gathered here, my God, everybody who's listening to the sound of my voice. Father, we pray that we receive the grace of having a quality relationship with you in Jesus' mighty name. When you get to that level, you begin to understand that your relay, everything concerning you becomes a testimony. Secondly, very quickly, let me move fast. What is that thing that will determine the weight of your prayer? The purity of conscience. You must have a pure conscience, a clear, pure conscience. Proverbs 28, 1, it says, The wicked flee when no one pursues, but the righteous are bold as a lion. Foundation for boldness in the spirit. You have to have a foundation of boldness. When you move away from iniquity, when you move away from the wickedness, you don't have to run away. You can approach God with boldness in Jesus' mighty name. Boldness will give you access to the throne of grace. Boldness will grant you access to the ears of God for the hearing of God. If you, wanna, if you want God to hear you, you need a purity of conscience, clarity, clear conscience, pure conscience. And God grants you an audience. You want an audience with God. You want to be assured that God is hearing you. Come on, somebody. Isaiah 59 verse 1 to 2 says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, nor is his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated you from your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. So, Pastor Fortune, now I'm beginning to understand that the reason why my prayers are not carrying weight, my prayers are not carrying the weight, they are not impactful, I'm not getting results. It is because sin has shut the face of God from me. Sin has shut the ears of God from me. It is, this is what scripture says, it's not me. He says, your iniquities have separated you from me. You are the one who moved away from me. I did not move away from you. And you are the one who you are saying, Lord, show me your face. But you are the one. It's your sins that I'm that have hidden my face from you. And the devil has come in to accuse you. I prophesy by the blood of Jesus that there shall be a washing away of your sins this evening. There shall be total repentance in Jesus' mighty name. As I trek through the scriptures, the Lord took me to Daniel. And in Daniel 1 verse 8, the Bible says Daniel purposed in his heart. That means it was an intention, an intentional purpose that he formed in his heart that he would not defile himself by eating the king's meat. Hallelujah. He made a conscious choice. Some of you, you need to develop a backbone that when you go to certain gatherings, you will not defile yourself. And I'm talking to people who are associating or even eating. You are not even supposed to eat with, with those who are ungodly. The, the, the scriptures that confirm that it's not only sitting in the council of the ungodly that is for forbidden but also eating with the ungodly brings defilement to yourself and you need to make and take a stand and a choice for god and say i'm not gonna eat certain things he said i'm not gonna eat and i'm not gonna dine with with what what these people are saying and the Bible says in Daniel, Daniel 6 verse 4, he says, So the governors and satraps sought to find some charge against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they couldn't find no charge or fault because he was faithful, nor was there any error, fault or found in him. Don't associate yourself with things that will want to bring you down. Come on, somebody. His prayer life was impactful and it became a precedent. It became a template. So like Daniel, you need to have that impactful prayer life. Come on, somebody verse 10 of the same scripture Daniel 6 10 he says now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed he went home and he went into his upper room and he opened the windows open towards Jerusalem he knelt down on his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as was his custom in early days so if you are going to have not only a purity of conscience and clarity if your prayers are going to carry weight you're going to have the consistency and always 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 determined to purpose in your heart that I'm going to pray to my God I'm going to worship my God. I'm not going to bow and just do certain things to please friends. Hallelujah. O King, live forever. 
My God has sent his angels and shut the mouth of the lions. You see, you when you when your weight, when your prayers carry weight, you get to the dimension of Daniel 6, verse 21 to 22, where you whatever you say. God can send angels to shut the mouth of a lion. I don't know which lions have been groaning and, and lions that have been trying to speak in your life. But you have power to shut the mouth of those lions in Jesus' mighty name. The scripture says, My God sent his angel and shut the lion's mouth so that they have not heard me because I was found innocent before him. And also, O king, I have done no wrong before you. So if you know that you have not done any wrong before God, God is able to defend you and God is able to protect you. Right now, I pray for every single person who has been fearing. You've been living under fear. I want you to know that God is able to protect you. Daniel humiliated lions. Thank you, Jesus. Daniel was able to shut the mouth of the lions. And the Bible also gives us an example of the Apostle Paul. He was a symbol of prayer in the New Testament. Come on, somebody. And he encouraged us in 1 Thessalonians 5, 17. He says, you must pray without ceasing. Don't cease. Don't stop. Don't stop when it gets hard. Don't stop when you feel like you want to cry. Cry while you are praying. Pray without ceasing. Whatever that defiles the conscience denies your access. Whatever that will defile your conscience, that is why remove yourself from people who are speaking negatively. Remove yourself from negative talk. Remove yourself from gossipers. Remove yourself from anything that is not ungodly. Hallelujah. Because if you don't remove yourself from anything that defiles you, you are not going to be granted access. Come on, somebody. Whatever defiles the conscience will also deflate uh, your, your boldness in God. You won't be able to step up before God in boldness. Hallelujah. That is why your prayers don't get don't carry weight. It's because your conscience has been defiled. Number three, what is the other thing that we need to learn? Is the sharpness of the word of revelation. The word revelation. You must have a revelation of the word. God bless you, Joshua. You must have revelation of the word. The revelation of the word is the light. The light of God's word. You must understand that when the word of God comes into you, it brings light. And you are removed from darkness. Some people are just resisting. You know, they have just this extra resistance against the word. They just don't want. There are people who just, my God help me. There are people who just don't want the light to come in. There's no amount of prayer you can, you, you can preach and teach. You can teach this thing as much as possible. But they, they, they want to hold on to this thing. They, they, they are what we call in the spirit realm, slaves who, who love their chains. You will tell the person, don't speak like this, don't say this, do this. They don't want. You will say, go and, 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 and learn the word. They won't want to do that. But you need the light of the word. You don't just need somebody to pray for you. You need the word inside of you. God bless you, Tepiso. You need the word. You need to learn the word of God. It is the word that you will be debating with when you meet the devil in your bedroom. And he says one, he says four. So the light is that vehicle that makes you, that transports you to the presence of God. The word of God will transport you to the presence of God. It, I know that he says, I inhabit the presence of my people, but light is also another form that you can guarantee the presence of God in your situation. There is a scripture that will open up for you. There is a scripture for the situation you're going through. There is nothing new under the sun. God has seen it all. What you're going through, somebody has gone through it. And there's a word that is for that situation. God bless you, Josh. So you have to pray with audacity. Your audacity will change levels. What you are seeing and hearing will begin to be different from what others are hearing. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. How many of you have started seeing changes? You have started hearing more in the spirit since you started this, this journey with me. Can I see those people? I know some of you have testified in the WhatsApp group, but can I see the people who are saying, I have seen results and I've seen my prayer life change. I am hearing more and I'm seeing more. Temba, you're here. You've, you've seen the change, right? Thank you so much for everybody who's following. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Welcome, first timers. Welcome to those who are joining. God bless you. 
Thank you, Shudu. You are seeing, right? Thank you so much, guys. You you cannot. You you there's no way anybody who has done what I've asked them to do seven days, J. Seven days in a series. Yes, Te Tepi, I know. God bless you. You've seen results. Amen. Who else has seen results? You can't you cannot do what I've what I've taught and you say you don't have results. It's a lie. You've seen the change, Talkstar. Mom Sophie says, I've seen the results. Thank you, Jesus. Worship and praise is one of the ways that you access. Psalm 43.3 says, Oh Lord, send your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to the holy hill. And let them lead me to your tabernacle. Hosea 14.2 says, Take words with you and return to the Lord. Say to him, Take away all iniquity. Receive us graciously, for we will offer the sacrifices of our lips. 1 Samuel 3.21 says, Then the Lord appeared again in Shiloh, for the, word, for the Lord revealed himself to Samuel and Shiloh by the word of the Lord. Why am I emphasizing all these three scriptures? It is by the word of God. Somebody type the word of God. Not the word of your parents, not the word of anybody else, not the word of your hakeba, not the word of your juju priest, but the word of God. By the word of God. That is what unlocks by the word of God. It is the word of God that we base it on. Not any other thing. The turnaround that you're expecting is in the word of God. It is in the word of God. Deuteronomy 29, 29 says the secret things belong to the Lord, our God. But those things which are revealed belong to us and to our children. That we may do all the words of this law. So we do everything that God says. We are not selective. Acts 20, 32 says, so now brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace. The apostle says, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace. So there is a word that unlocks grace. There is a word that unlocks unmerited favor. Which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. Do you now begin to see what I'm saying? I'm unlocking things right now. He says, you have been commended to the word of his grace. There is what we call the word of his grace. And until you get the word of his grace, you cannot access the inheritance that has been locked up for you. There is, there is inheritance you are supposed to be taking. The reason why you are suffering, you are not getting your, the results, is because you have not unlocked the inheritance that has been given to those who are sanctified, me and you. Let us come boldly. Let us develop confidence. Now, this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. The reason why my prayers are not getting impact is because I'm not asking according to his will. I keep on asking him to bless a mess that I know is a mess. I keep on asking him to bless a relationship that is rotten. And I can see that this relationship is killing me. This relationship is not God-ordained. For those of you who are taking notes, I'm in 1 John 5, 14. You can't keep asking God to bless your mess and expect him to do that. Mm -mm. I know I may not be liked by many people. But if I don't preach holiness, I would be cheating you. There are certain things that you will still be walking in some kind of blessing, but there is a blessing that is unlocked when you begin to do things in the right way. And I'm talking to those who are shaking up, those who are cohabiting, and you know that you've been living with somebody who is not your husband or your wife. Try getting married and tell me what happens. There is a blessing that is unlocked. Ask those who are married, they will tell you. I know some of them are going through challenges. They will tell you, hey, don't even start getting married. No, 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 no. A lot of people used to discourage me and say, well, why do you want to get married? And I said, I want to experience what, if you say, let me go and experience my own and, and, and establish my own experience. Don't be discouraged. If that is what you want, that is what God will do for you. 
Luke 10, 16, Luke chapter 10, verse 16, he says, He who hears you, hears me. He who rejects you, rejects me. And he who rejects me, rejects him who sent me. So anybody that has rejected you, has rejected Christ. And if Jesus could be heard, you will be heard as well. So you are begin to understand what Luke 10, 16 is teaching us is that light is reflective. When you receive the word, it is reflective. Any problem that is looking for you is looking for light. And once light, the light that is inside of you hits that point. Any devil that is despising you has come to their end. Any devil that has been despising you and looking for you comes to, the, to, to termination. And then there's what we call the potency of faith that will release the weight that you need. You need to be a weighty Christian that is releasing weighty prayers that are effective. For effective prayer to happen, I need the prayer strength, hallelujah, the strength of prayer that is released by the potency of faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Let him who asks, ask in faith, not doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For let no man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. These are people who are wavering back and forth. I mean, James chapter 1, verse 6 to 7. Everybody, today you are with God. Today you are not with God. Today you are, you are, how does my daughter say it? She says the, you are an, an, an agnostic or something like that. You don't believe in anything. You have to believe in something. If you don't believe in anything, you fall for anything. If any one of you is sick, let him call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of the faith shall save the sick. And the Lord will raise them up. The prayer of the what? Of faith will save the sick. So when we pray for people who are sick, that prayer is supposed to actually heal the person who is sick. And the Lord is the one who raises him up. Not me, not anybody else. God is the one that raises him up. And if he has committed any sin, he will be forgiven. And then he says, confess your trespasses one to another. Pray for one another so that you may be healed. Did you ever see that? That you don't have to wait for your prophet and you don't have to wait for your pastor to pray for each other. He says, through forgiveness, through working out your issues, confess your sins one to the other. When you have wronged somebody, stop, stop being proud and feeling that you are too big to oh, go ask for forgiveness. That person says that you've not seen it. That's the problem. James chapter 5, verse 14 to 17. That is where the scripture is. With me, don't worry, you can check me. You, it's, it's there. It says, confess your sins to one another. If I've wronged my brother, your trespasses to one another, I'm sorry. This is what I did. This is what I said. This I was off key. I thought badly about you. I spoke badly about you. Confess yourself. Confess. Somebody says, may God forgive me for all my sins. The biggest one is when you can't forgive yourself. So he now says this. This sentence is very important. I need to help those who are, have been struggling. You've been going around the same thing. It's not everybody. And this, 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 please, this illustration or this explanation is not for everybody. Some of you are sick due, due to different reasons. There are some people who are sick because of this very thing that they've not been able to forgive the trespasses of other people. You have wronged other people and or you have been wronged and you have vowed that you're never going to forgive that person. Forgiving does not mean you're taking the person back. Forgiving does not mean you're opening yourself up to the person. Forgive them and let them go and take them out of your purview so that you can be healed. If you don't do that, you are opening up the door to cancer. Can I educate some people? One day we're going to have a teaching where I, I teach you about the different illnesses and which of them can be spiritually caused. So forgive those who wronged you. Let it go. 
I know you despise them. They are despicable. And the things that they did to you. There's a lady where, you know, you've, you've seen your husband so many times. You've caught your husband so many times cheating. You've literally seen him in bed with another woman. And you are so bitter at the moment. You are very angry. Very, very angry. And you have vowed that you will never forgive him for that. And I'm asking you to open your heart and forgive and move on. You don't have to take him back. You can move on. The Holy Spirit has actually given you the confirmation because you couldn't stand it anymore. It was just too much disrespect. Who am I talking to? Oh, Shakura Bahasata. The effective fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So it is prayers that are effective that will avail much, that will avail our results that we are looking for. Oh my God, I didn't see how, how time was fast spent. Elijah was a man with like passions and he prayed endlessly that it would not rain. So effectiveness of prayer, fervent prayer and endless prayer. What did I say? Effective, fervent, and earnest. I've already shared with you the example of men uh, in the Bible or people in the Bible that, um, that prayed with the potency of faith. Elijah was that kind of man. There's also Daniel that I think we spoke about, right? You need to move with the revelation of the word of God. Then I set my face towards the Lord God to make a request by prayer and supplications with fast, fasting, sackcloth and ashes. So everybody who had effective prayer in the Bible, he moved. Daniel moved based on the word that was given in the book of Jeremiah concerning him. Based on that prophetic word, he moved. He moved, he set his face, he proposed to look towards God and he proposed to just move always consistently towards God. And the Bible says in Daniel chapter 9 verse 20 to 23, but I'm going to jump to 21 quickly. He says he now saw the man Gabriel who, he saw the angel Gabriel, imagine the whole archangel whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning being caused to fly swiftly. He reached me about the time of the evening offering and he informed me and talked with me and said, Oh Daniel, I have now come forth to give you skill to understand. At the beginning of your supplications, the command went out and I have come to tell you for you are greatly beloved. Therefore consider the matter and understand the vision. Come on somebody. Do you know what it means to have the angel, the archangel himself moving in your direction? The, revelate, the, the revealed word, the revelation in the word. That is what will fuel your supplications. Your revelation of the word is what will fuel. It's the fuel you need for your petitions. The revelation in the word is what you need to fuel your, your intercession. The revelation in the word is what will fuel your adoration. Your adoration is what unlocks how when you call go on and romance God and you have that quality relationship with him. Hallelujah. When you make petitions, when you make supplications, he begins to show you by the revealed word. What is revealed determines what can be pursued and what can be pursued depend, de determines what can be possessed. Can I repeat that for somebody? I said what is revealed determines what you will be able to pursue. And what you can pursue will be determined, will determine what you can possess. You cannot possess the things that you don't pursue. Let me break it down like that. Let me explain it in reverse. You cannot possess what you don't pursue. And you cannot pursue what has not been revealed to you. So you need to see it. Some of you are chasing dreams that have not even been confirmed and visions that have not been confirmed in you. But you are doing copycat. Some of you are chasing prophecies that have never even been revealed or confirmed to you. Somebody gave you a prophecy that you're supposed to do something and God has never spoken to you personally concerning that thing. And said to you, it's not only going to be by fasting, my darling. You can also just pray. Okay? It's good when you combine it with fasting, but you must also pray, principally pray. 
Hallelujah. The just shall live by faith. Habakkuk 2. I will stand my watch and set myself on the rampant and watch to see what he will say to me and, I, and what I will answer when I'm corrected. The Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain that he may run it who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak and it will not lie. Ha Hallelujah. Though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Behold, the proud, his soul is not upright in him, but the just shall live by faith. Write the vision, make it plain, so those that are reading it may run. Hallelujah. You will have effective prayers. You will have answers and results. Why is faith important in the place of prayer? Faith functions on the platform of confidence and the reality of God. It shows that you are confident in your God. It shows that you are confident in your God. You are confident in the reality that God is the guarantee to answer prayer. Faith takes hold of the character of the faithfulness that you need to exhibit. Hallelujah. For God to give you the results. Faith operates in a doubt-free environment. How do we know that you are faithful? How do we know that you have faith? How do we know that you actually believe? When Pastor Fortune will declare a word, it is revealed when you are doubt-free. When your fear is eliminated completely in Jesus' mighty name. That is why Luke 8.50 says, But when Jesus heard it, he answered him. He said, Do not be afraid, only believe. And she was made well. So if Jesus can give a command like that, Do not be afraid, only believe. And your wellness and your health is, is released immediately. Somebody type, No more unbelief. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say, I will have clarity of purpose. I will have clarity of focus in Jesus' mighty name. One thing I have desired of the Lord, that I will seek you, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Hallelujah. It's important that you have clarity of purpose and clarity of focus at the place of prayer where you have, you are now, you have a one mind, you are one minded, one eye, one single eye that says one thing that I desire is that I will seek and I will continue seeking. I will ask and I will continue asking. I will knock and I will continue knocking. Talk to me, somebody. What is not clear to you cannot be cleared away from you. That thing that is an obstacle, that thing that is a boundary, that is that thing that is a barrier for you cannot be cleared until you get understanding. So I want you to pray along with me now and declare and decree that, Lord, clear up my mind. Help me to have clear focus so that I can clear any obstacle that has been hindering me, any obstacle that has been saying that I will not get to my breakthrough, any obstacle that has been saying that I will not get to my destiny in the name of Jesus Christ by my clarity and focus. My my God, by my clarity in my prayers, my God, in Jesus' mighty name, my prayers will release results of clarity, focus in Jesus' mighty name. I will reach my destination in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I want you to understand that what cannot be defined cannot be discovered. God, Father, I pray for every single person that is at the sound of my voice right now, oh God, that you will define the things that they need to discover, my God, and they will discover those things and they will fly high in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, somebody. Once you understand, once it's been defined what you need to discover, that thing, once you have discovered it, it can now be delivered. You cannot get delivery of something that you have not discovered and that discovery can never come until it has been defined for you it, it can only be defined at a place of prayer it can only be defined at the place of prayer the reason why they don't have clarity fortune is because they don't have a quality relationship with me they have not gone through the whole process so that i can define certain things so that things can be clarified therefore when they repent and come back from their ways and come into the point of definition they will become and they will start seeing their eyes will open to see the discovery of where I'm leading them to and when they discover where they are going they will begin to take delivery of the possessions that I've already allocated for them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ my God I thank you the Bible says then Jacob was left alone. There's a point where you will be left alone, child of God, where there's no friends, where there is no WhatsApp group, there is no there is no prayer partner inside, where you are the one who's left alone in your situation and you have to wrestle when everybody's advice has come and gone. There's a play, there's a plan or a place and a season where you will come to where you realize that all the advice that you have been getting is actually been clouding you too much. Too much information too much overwhelming that you need to be alone with God. There is that season 
that you need to be alone with your thoughts that you have been running away from. But Jacob made a decision that I'm going to wrestle with this angel until the breaking of day. And he saw that he did not prevail against him. He touched the socket of his hip and the socket of Jacob's hip uh, was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go before the day breaks because the angel had to go up and other angels come in on another shift. And Jacob said, no, 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 no. This shift is not changing until my shift comes. You are not changing. You are not moving away. I will not let you go until you bless me. Until the angel said, your name shall no longer be Jacob, but your name shall now be called Israel. Come on, somebody. Hannah debated with God. Hannah debated with God until they thought he was, she was drunk. Hannah wanted effective prayer. Hannah wanted to release strength in her prayers. Hallelujah. She made a vow to God and said, Oh Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look upon the affliction of your maiden servant and remember me and not forget your maiden servant, but will give your maiden servant a male child, then I will give him over to the Lord and all the days of his life. No razor shall come upon his head. Hallelujah. That is why yesterday I reminded you guys that some of you have made vows to God that you have not kept. And that is why you have actually, uh, right now, Cody Abbasota, can I cancel these vows that you cannot keep? Can I pray for some people right now? You have made vows and commitments. You have answered altar calls and vowed to, to pay monies that you could not afford. You knew that you could not afford this thing. But you were thinking that you are responding by the Holy Spirit. And you walked up and you did vows that you knew you couldn't commit. And those vows are speaking against you. Am I talking to somebody? If there's no people like that, I won't pray. Don't worry, I'll move on, I'll step on. How many people are here? If you if you, you are here, I just say, that's me. I've made vows that I knew that I could not, I, I was under pressure. Some of us are under peer pressure. We want to impress people. We make vows we cannot keep. And then we walk around with the guilt that we cannot keep these vows. We have made vows to God we could not keep. I want to cancel those vows. Is there somebody here? I command a total freedom. I release you from any vow that you made under ignorance. I release you. Father, I ask for mercy. And we cancel every single vow that was made in error. Every single vow that was made under pressure. Every single vow that was made under a lack of knowledge. In Jesus' mighty name. Let it be cancelled in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we are starting on a new slate with you. Just in case I'm not clear. Some of you went to conferences, you went to meetings, and you, you vowed, and people put you under pressure. And said, there's, there's people here who need to give this, 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 this. And you went, and they said, you, there's nobody, everybody here is going to do. And you just stood up because you wanted to be respectful. And you made a vow. That you could not keep. I want to free you from that, that captivity right now in Jesus name. There are people that went and took loans. They took loans. To honor things that they had no business to go take loans for. Come on, somebody. I'm teaching you to develop thick skin. I'm teaching you to understand. Your Holy, the Holy Spirit will be the one that confirms. There is a season and a moment when God will tell you, okay, you are to sow a seed. And I will provide the seed for the sower. But some people have made vows because they were under pressure. You were just excited. I know it's untypical and uncommon to hear somebody say this. I don't know if you how many people you've met that will teach you this. A covenant is a covenant and it has to be honored. So if you made certain covenants and you knew that you do not you do not you 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 have not been able to 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 do it. I release you from it right now in Jesus mighty name. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says that two blind men came to Jesus in Matthew chapter 20. As they went out of Jericho, a great multitude was following him. 
Behold the blind men sitting by the road. When they heard that Jesus was passing, they cried out and said, Jesus, have mercy on us, O Son of God. This was talking about blind Bartimaeus who raised his voice. Sometimes when you feel like your prayers are not effective enough, you need to raise your voice and shout the loudest. And they said, what do you, he asked them, he said, what do you want me to do for you? He, they said to him, Lord, let our eyes be open. So Jesus had compassion and touched their eyes and immediately their eyes received sight and they followed him. Don't be shy to scream. Don't be shy to, to, to shout it out loud and say, God, I need help. Even when they try to keep you quiet, even when the crowd is so much and they're trying to push you, if the woman with the issue of blood did not push through, he would, she would not have been able to take a blessing. Oh my God, let me finish up. Oh Jesus. And I mean, I can continue with, when I'm, I'm teaching and I'm, I, I, I can pass like this in the Lord. Let me speak to that, Kim, because there are a lot of people who are going through the same thing that you're going through. Guys, this get rich quick schemes. Get out of that nonsense. I don't want to derail Kim, but I'm, I'm just going to make this as a statement. These tradings that are happening, is, is it Forex trading? I pray for you. That God will help you to settle that low. That is why, please help me, Kim, help me listen to the message that I preached yesterday. It will help you a lot. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or think according to the power that works in us. What is your expectation I'm asking you tonight? Please put up your expectations. Because your expectation will determine your manifestation and expectation will determine your experience. What you're experiencing now is because of what you're expecting. What, what you're going through in life currently tells me exactly what you have been expecting. That is what is manifesting. Romans 8, 19, he says, For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. So they are waiting for us to be revealed. They are waiting for us to show, show and shine forth our glory. When you begin to experience the strength of prayer, or effective strength in prayer, you begin to be a person who walks in testimony. You begin to evidence the act of testimony. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Luke 1, 36, it says, Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. For God, with God, nothing is impossible. Can I proclaim it? Can we proclaim it together and say, with God, nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible with God. If Elizabeth, who can conceive, nobody shall be called barren in Jesus' mighty name. I pray for every single person who's on this broadcast. I declare and I decree that you shall not be called barren in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Your womb is clear for conception in Jesus' mighty name. You will meet your properly ordained marital spouse and you will conceive in Jesus mighty name every single person that has been shamed because of barrenness father God I speak to that womb right now in Jesus mighty name father I correct every womb that has issues with fibroids and everything else I God bless you I saw that testimony somebody said that when I was praying for the wombs is it yesterday or day before yesterday there was something that was released the, that, that was a demonic manifestation that, that that came out in the form of discharge Everything that God did not plant in your body, I repeat that prayer today. And I say everything that has not been planted by God, let it be flushed out in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You are receiving a restoration in your womb right now in Jesus' mighty name. There is a total repair. When you go to your next gynae appointment, there shall not be any infirmity being located because God is going to flush it out. You're going to start seeing certain things. I'm sorry if there's men on this broadcast, but begin to notice when you're, what you will be seeing on your sanitary towels. There are things that are going to be strange. Some of you, you, you are welcome. Please, guys, on the WhatsApp group, do not say some of the things, shame. You, please DM me privately unless you are okay to, to share with everybody to see. But you can DM me and tell me exactly what came out. I know some of you have been sending pictures of what has been coming out. Thank you, Jesus. 
The Bible says, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the words of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to death. So what I was saying yesterday, remember, those who don't testify, you, you lose the effectivity because the whole point of God giving you a blessing as well is so that you can testify of his goodness so that other people can know that God has blessed you. So don't hold back. Don't, don't keep quiet. There are people that I've prayed for, that we've prayed for, and they get testimonies and they don't come back. And they think it's because, oh, if I tell them that, oh, now I've gotten the job, oh, they will expect something. No. We did it out of love. We sacrificed our time out of love to believe with you. So if you get that breakthrough and you don't feel like sowing any seed or anything, it's okay. Just come back and testify. Testify to let us know what the Lord has done that's good. Testify to other saints so that they may be encouraged. Don't worry. We won't ask you for anything. And it's wrong for people who are feeding you spiritually and you don't come back and testify. Don't be like the nine lepers who left and didn't come back and say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the words of our testimony. Every time we testify, we overcome in Jesus' name. God bless those who are gifting. The Bible talks about Gideon in the book of Judges chapter 6. It says the angel of the Lord sat under the, 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 the terebinth tree and started to talk to Gideon and said, the Lord is with you, you mighty men of valor. You can read it later, Judges 6 verse 11 to 14. And Gideon said, how do you mean I'm a mighty man of valor? I'm the least. I come from a family that's poor. I come from nothing. I come from a nothing background. How can you call me mighty? Because God sees you where you're going. God sees you as who you are, not as how you see yourself. Choose to see yourself as God sees you and pray as God would expect you. Then the Lord turned to him and said, Go in this your might of yours, and you shall save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent you? So if God has sent you, God is sending some people to go save their families tonight. In Jesus' mighty name, God is sending you to go and be the salvation and the deliverance that people need in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, Rabbi. David said to Saul, your servant used to keep his father's sheep and went and, and, and when a lion and a bear came, I, I, I attacked it. And, and David reaffirms in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 17. He says, I'm able to take on any uncircumcised Philistine, any giant, any Goliath that is threatening the children of Israel, that is busy harassing us. Hallelujah. Because I know what God has done in my life. I need people who will look back at the CV and remember the good things that God has done for them. The fact that you're still alive Life here just today is more than enough to praise him we went through ebola we went through COVID. they still COVID around now but look at us we are still standing they tried to bring us down in every single form thank you jesus just hold on a second guys Was there a testimony that I missed? Who said congrats to the daughter? Did somebody give birth? Please help me see that testimony again. Testify again. Hallelujah. The Lord who delivered me when I fought for the lion, when I fought the bear, is the same God that will deliver me. I'm seeing God bless you, my sister, but I don't see what the testimony is. Please, somebody share the testimony once more. Hallelujah. Oh, Tando! Tando's daughter got a promotion, guys. Can we celebrate? Guys, all of you who are, who are waiting for a promotion in your workplaces, I want you to type the following name on the comment section. T-H-A-N-D-O. Tando. Tando's daughter. I don't know what's your daughter's name, but her daughter. Just say congratulations, Tando. I want to teach you to congratulate others. Come on, somebody. Tando, Tando, Tando. Tando's daughter. Just Tando, congratulations. God bless you. 
we celebrate with you my darling in jesus mighty name we thank you holy spirit father as tando has tando's daughter has gotten that promotion father god everybody who's wishing them congratulations father god we are tapping into that anointing that release that effective prayer that release that that testimony thank you so much do you see what is happening just after i teach about the words of your testimony that word is going to encourage somebody somebody knows now that promotion is possible you can pray for it they've been praying for that and it happened my god congratulations my darling so let's take advantage of the testimonies take advantage of your own testimonies take advantage of the testimonies of others hallelujah whether it's past testimonies whether it's present testimonies that thing will give future and weight to your prayers god bless you testimonies are actually very important at the place of prayer if you are going to pray god wants you to keep on acknowledging him and say thank you god god thank you that i've not been able to sleep without a meal in my life thank you lord that i've got a covering over my head i have a roof over my head while other people right now in these cold weather conditions they are sleeping without blankets in the street thank you jesus when you begin to testify more it multiplies your confidence in god and it multiplies your confidence in god's ability to deliver answers to you at the place of prayer this is happening at the place of prayer now indeed elizabeth your relative has also conceived a son in old age at the place of prayer the more you testify the others will call abhasata kadie shikiti oh my god wait a second we've got another testimony on whatsapp uh, on on uh, sorry on uh, mara official ashmir she says after 9 years sorry i i can't see whether the the i the, the photo but says after nine years of being a call center agent i become a manager can we say congratulations ashmir this is fortunel online family guys we don't joke with these things ashmir is was promoted to becoming manager don't be jealous don't be envious come on say congratulations ashmir we do it for one we do it for everybody congratulations ashmir god bless you god bless you congrats god congratulations somebody became a manager people need to know that what we are doing here is not a joke we are we are celebrating the success karaba hasata my god this is amazing So testimonies will multiply our confidence in God. Testimonies will deliver the spiritual technical knockout that you need to hit the enemy. You need to hit the enemy with a knockout and say I don't care what you're trying to do, but I'm I'm still testifying either way. My God. Oh, look at that testimony. Oh my God. I think today this message Wait, there's another one. Um Lisa Look at that. Lisa, why can't I I'm trying to pin Lisa's comment. Hold on. The devil is a liar. We will celebrate with Lisa just now. I couldn't pin the comment, guys. But Lisa said a lot of people got retrenched and she got to keep her job. That is something to rejoice. Can we say congratulations Lisa? Lisa got to keep a job while others were retrenched. Look at what the prayers are doing. I've seen the request when they come in past the there's retrenchments happening in my workplace and when we make those declarations and we say you will not be retrenched. Congratulations Lisa in Jesus name mighty name. So deliver that knockout to the enemy with your testimony. We overcome by the blood of the lamb. The same way at the place of prayer Gideon moved from affliction to manifestation by drawing strength 
and the testimonies. From the testimonies, he drew strength. Hallelujah. So you must equally draw strength. Hallelujah. From the testimonies that he had, David drew strength and he knew he could fight his Goliath. Come on, somebody. When prayers are loaded with testimonies, when you are thanking God about the things that he has already done, those type of testimonies, they begin to secure both the attention and the intervention of God because God says, this is somebody who's appreciative. This is somebody who is thankful. This is somebody who thanks me even in advance. Come on, somebody. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. God cannot deny himself. He will continue to bless you. I want you to know that testimonies are prophetic seeds. They are prophetic seeds. A testimony is a prophetic seed that is able to manifest itself in Jesus' mighty name. It's able to reproduce itself. Everybody who has testified today, I want to encourage you and tell you that many in your family members are going to testify of the same thing and even more. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh my God. I don't think they will invite me again at 10 p.m. because I take such a long time. Those who will need to have effective prayer are those that have an intensity intensity of passion and desperation. Can I please have the iPhone charger, please, for the other uh, broadcast quickly? I don't want to lose the power there. Intensity of passion and desperation. I'm closing now, guys, for real, for real. You must have an intensity of passion and desperation. You must be desperate enough. We're going to go through the examples now. The, the scripture encourages in Matthew 7, 7, he says, the kingdom of God suffereth violence and the violence take it by force. The same way Jacob said, I will not let you go until, the day, un, until you bless me. Intensity, you must be desperate enough to make sure that you receive the answers to your prayers. Like Hannah, he, she continued to pray. Even when they said she was drunk, she continued to pray. And she said, I'm not moving until conception happens in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, somebody. Somebody say, I'm desperate enough today. I am desperate in Jesus' name. I will be desperate enough in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody. Declare, Lord, I'm desperate. I'm here. I'm here to take possession, my God. I'm here. My prayers will be effective in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Somebody say, I'm desperate, oh God. I'm desperate enough, oh God. Let heaven hear your desperation right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let heaven hear your desperation this night. Come on, somebody. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, I release passionate, fervent prayers. My God, today, every single person, my God, may they receive a spirit of passion. May they receive that spirit of that will make them desperate to receive outcomes to their prayers in Jesus' mighty name. Father God, every single thing that will come out of their mouth in Jesus' mighty name, it will generate a positive impact in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I thank you, Lord, that they are receiving a refueling of their strength in, in prayer, my God. Their prayers will carry strength. Their prayers will carry impact. There will be enough weight and momentum oh god to release every single thing that they are believing you for in jesus mighty name thank you holy spirit we are taking it by force father god we belong to your army those who are violent my god and we declare we decree that we are taking it by force in jesus mighty name we are going to demand what we need life does not give you what what you don't demand you have to demand it because you deserve it you may feel like you deserve it, but you may have to demand it. So demand it. Ask and it shall be given. Seek and you will find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I thank you. Can we begin to pray in tongues? My God, I thank you. Father, I release productive and impactful prayers prayers that will bring outcomes that are expected my god expectations shall not be cut off hope shall not be cut off in the mighty name of jesus christ father god we thank you lord that we are receiving the force of the guarantee that we are going to release productive prayers from today impactful prayers from today in the name of jesus christ from the left the right the south the north my god everybody on facebook youtube and on tiktok in the mighty name of jesus christ father we have heard what you did in the lives of many others and my god 
God, we have seen the testimonies of those that have testified on the broadcast tonight in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you are reproducing the same and even more in our lives in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we trust you for reproduction in our own lives. Come on, somebody pray along with me and declare it in the comment section and say, God, reproduce the same in my life. I reproduce promotions, reproduce job uh, allocations in Jesus' mighty name, reproduce the, 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 the fruitfulness of my womb, reproduce beautiful marriages in my life. Father God, what others that are experiencing that are good. Father, I thank you, Lord, that it will be reproduced in my life as well. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Father, I've come with desperation, with the demand of fulfillment and performance. My God, we are we are asking your God to perform those things that you have promised us, oh God. We have come with a, with a spirit to demand, oh God. We demand fulfillment. Come on, somebody. We demand fulfillment, oh Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody who's experiencing pain around your rib cage, please identify yourself so that I can pray for you. It's around your rib cage and all around here right now. In Jesus' mighty name, your rib cage, there's pain resonating all to, to your back right now. I need to pray with you as I close. I'm closing, guys. I'm closing. This is my real closing. Father, I refuse to settle for anything less than your will. Come on, somebody. You know, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I command that pain to go. In Jesus' mighty name. I want you to stretch out. Just stand up and walk around and just stretch yourself. And say, Father, I receive my healing in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I receive my healing in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Rayma, you are also having that pain. Elizabeth is saying he's having that pain right now. Okay, I don't even know who to pain. Right now, guys, I want you to stand up. And I want you to just, just move around. Just circulate just three times and just, just be stretching yourself. And I want you to prophesy to yourself and prophesy to that pain right now. I refuse to settle for anything less. I take back my, pro, my my healing right now. Right now. Every single person who's having that pain, even that chest pain, I speak to it right now. I command that bronchitis to go right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I refuse to settle for anything less than your will, O oh God. I refuse to settle for anything less than your health, than my health, whatever it is. Call it by name, in Jesus' mighty name. I refuse to settle for anything less in Jesus' mighty name. Father, in this season, I ask that you fulfill your plan to every single person who's at the sound of my voice. In this season, Father God, I ask that you fulfill your plan. Let your will be done and, it, and, and let your purpose be fulfilled in their lives, in Jesus' name. Father, we ask that you frustrate the agenda of the enemy, in Jesus' mighty name. Uh, uh, frustrate the agenda of the enemy right now. Father, we ask that, my God, every single rain of every snare, every single rain of brim, stones, horrible tempest, whatever it is, my God, it will begin to fall in the camp of the evil one in the name of Jesus Christ fire brimstone in the camp of the evil one we cancel every evil manipulation in the name of jesus christ in the mighty name of jesus christ father i speak to that person that's got a headache right now there's a headache that hits you here in the middle of your neck from the back it's hitting and it comes to your head like this to the front here it ends here it always you've got it's a center it's aligned with your spine you can identify yourself so that we can confirm your healing Father, thank you for restoration in Jesus' mighty name. Father, arise and let your enemies be scattered in Jesus' mighty name. I declare and I decree. That's the Holy Spirit, my darling. Let it go. Just receive. I want you to receive. I want you to be perceptive and receive. Father, every stranger in our lives, 
every evil infirmity your tenure has expired your time has expired i command you to go in the name of jesus i command every infirmity to go right now every single pain it goes right now in the name of jesus christ that heat that you will begin to experience is the Lord performing the surgery and confirming. You're going to tell me right now that pain is gone in Jesus' mighty name. There's somebody who's experiencing a very huge breeze on your left hand side. A huge breeze, a wind that is coming on your left hand side. Whatever has been fractured, whatever has been broken in your life, it is coming back to you in Jesus' mighty name. Every single form of witchcraft, every witchcraft agent that has been sent to monitor your life, I command them to be roasted by fire in the mighty name of Jesus Christ right now. In Jesus' mighty name. Anyone who wants you dead, they will die in your place. Anybody who is wishing you evil, the Lord will repay them. I come against the spirit of premature death in your life. I come against the spirit of premature death in your family's life in Jesus' mighty name. Anyone that has planned any death plans, I hereby cancel it in the name of Jesus Christ. There's somebody who was scheduled to, I don't even know if I'm the right way to put it and say it was scheduled, but you are about to eat poison. You've been having problems with your wife to a large extent and your wife has been meditating on whether or not, actually your wife has been influenced. I see a conversation that they've been having. There's a particular, your sister-in-law, You, without calling your name, I'm going to tell you that there's been conversations and you, you, your sister-in-law is actually not even allowed to come to your house. But your sister-in-law has been talking so much to your wife that actually they plan to give you poison. So she was planning to poison you. I decree and I declare, as the word of God says, we shall eat any poisonous thing and it shall by no means harm us. Father God, I pray for him right now in Jesus' mighty name. You're actually not even going to your house very often if you are that person, so that I can clarify, so that not anybody, everybody else who doesn't like their in-laws, they think I'm talking about them. You have not been going to your house. You've not been sleeping at home. The person I'm talking to. You've actually abandoned your house. That is the person, not just anybody. I'm not, don't play with me, please. Please don't play with me. Are you serious? Sorry guys, I'm just shocked because somebody actually confirmed it publicly right now. Father, I prophesy and I say to every single person who's at the sound of my voice right now, every season of limitation, every season of backwardness is over today in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, God, for deliverance. Thank you for deliverance. I see your, I see your testimony, my darling. The person is on Mara Official. I see, I, see the, I see your confirmation. I'm just glad that God has delivered you on time. Every material that is in your hands, the God who changed Jacob into Israel, let him change your story to glory right now in Jesus' mighty name. 
every season of limitation and backwardness is over in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I decree and I declare that everything that is not working in your life will begin to work right now in Jesus' mighty name. Every satanic deposit, every strange deposit that has been inside of you, every demonic deposit right now is being flushed out of your system in the name of Jesus Christ. Anything that has been deposited inside of you, I retrieve it outside of you, inside, inside of you right now. I take it out in Jesus' mighty name. Whatever charm that they used on you right now, I command it to lift. You will begin to experience a change. Right now, that person who you had consumed something, you had consumed a charm, a charm that was performed on you. You are feeling heat all over your body right now as if your body is heating up. Like it's really like it's, you've just gone into a fever mode right now. I can see you literally you just suddenly you are in your living room and you have suddenly started feeling like feverish I see it and it's it's not a red curtain but it's almost like an orangish curtain there's an orange cloth that I'm seeing where you are sitting and the walls are white In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Anybody that planned evil for you, let them catch fire in the name of Jesus Christ. Let them catch fire in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you, not till in Jesus' mighty name. Let the Holy Spirit perfect that which he has started in you in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Jesus. Let me focus on, on, on these prayer requests today. I promise. Guys, we are fast spent for time, so it's five minutes. I'm not supposed to be actually taking two hours. I, otherwise, Apostle won't borrow me this platform anymore. But... Uh, <laughs> Let me finish up in five minutes. Let me see. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I thank you. Shakuna masa takadi abasa takadi beshe kiti. Ina na na masa tokodi abasa takali abaso tokodi abasa takali abaso to 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 boshia. Ika na 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 masi ola masa takadi abaso tokodi abasa ta 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 ba. Roshi kala masa takadi abasa takane meshe kiti kina ma. Zia la 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 ma soto kodia ma soto kodia ma soto kodia ba likosia spiwe spindile spindile how many times do your in-laws have access to your house rakolo bo shiandari ya ma na 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 ba soto kodia who from your in-laws was at your house the last time rande de 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 be shiandana na ma soko dia ma sata kali ya ba soto roshi kana ma sata kala ba sata kali ya ba sha Roshiko na ma 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 si o lo 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 bo si ya. Ikala, guys, please make sure you follow the account that you are seeing me on. Let's quickly wrap up um and see what the Lord will do. There's still Friday, yes. We are having our all night and we're gonna be praying and doing deliverances right through. In Jesus' mighty name, oh my God, did I miss the response? Karaba shoto konia masata kadia masata. I'm moving on because I wanted to address that issue of the black powder that is on your wall, of who, who spilled it on your wall. But I'm not seeing. I don't know whether it's because the things are moving into... Father, I reverse the spell that has been done in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to everybody who's your first time. Please make sure you follow. I'm live every 5 a.m. and 10 p.m. Oh, I didn't see Spindile. I've now seen it. Father, I pray for Spindle right now. 
in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, I, I reverse the evil hand of witchcraft in Jesus' mighty name. Spinella, don't fear. Just wipe it, wipe it off and declare. I reverse that curse in Jesus' mighty name. Your marital destiny shall not be arrested in Jesus' mighty name. Your marital destiny shall not be arrested in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Shako namasata kadia bahasata. Iya mama 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 maso kodia bahasata kadia. Wow, God bless you, Nosta. Thank you for that confirmation. Shando do bosa kala maia maso to kodia ba. YouTube, talk to me. Are we still like? Are we still together? Shendeliya maso kodia maso to kodia basata kadia. Welcome, 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 welcome. Everybody who's new on the broadcast. Guys, I'm live every day, Friday. I mean, every single day of the week, Friday, 5 a.m. South African Standard Time. Please program by making sure you follow and you click on the notification bell. Those of you on Mara Official, I'm going to share my link with you right now. As we close, we're going to close out on um, TikTok. So those of you on Facebook and on YouTube, I want to thank you for being online. As I close the broadcast just for the stream to be at least shorter for people to be able to view, you're welcome to come to TikTok and we talk a bit and we pray a bit. But uh, it's literally going to be five minutes or so. Uh, tomorrow is Friday. So tomorrow we have 5 a.m. prayers, right? And tomorrow, 5 a.m. And then we don't have 10 p.m. tomorrow. Tomorrow we have midnight. We cross over midnight, right? going to cross over Magnana what's up me tell me tell me what what did they say what is the reason for it is the course full or maybe the the, 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 the degree that he wants she wants to register for is is full let's get to the root of it is she was the application late or what's happening God bless you so much, YouTube. I love you. Let's come to TikTok. TikTok people say they say they say their goodbyes a bit slower. I love you guys. See you tomorrow at five.